Now that your work environment has been properly configured, it's time to start a new chapter of this course and to learn about variables and data types in Cold Fusion. Now don't worry, you won't learn everything about variables and data types. That would be an entire other course. You will learn just enough to get you started. So when we develop a web application, really what we do is manipulating data. We capture data using forms. We can capture data using other means, of course, but mainly we use forms to capture data. We check data for compliance. We manipulate data. We can add, subtract, multiply numbers together. We can change the currency of an amount of money. We can concatenate strings of text and so on. So we manipulate data. We store that data and we retrieve that data. We store it mainly in a database, but we can store and retrieve data to and from a file, uh, a cookie or a other storage mechanism. So really, everything we do revolves around data. Programming a web application, it's all about data. So we need a pretty strong storage mechanism to store that data and to access the data when we need to access that data. And really, that is what a variable is. A variable is a named space in the memory of your computer in which you will store and retrieve stuff. Now, the interesting part here is named space. A variable is a spot, a territory in the memory of your computer and you assign a name to that spot in the memory of your computer. And inside that space, you can store stuff. Stuff is the most precise word I could come up with to describe what you can place in a variable. It can be a string of text, it can be a date, it can be a number, it can be an integer, it can be a yes-no value, or it can be a very complex data type. It can be an object, for example. Really, stuff is the most precise word I could come up with. You can put anything you want in those kind of variable. Now, a variable is made of two things. You have a name, and that's the name of the namespace in the memory of your computer, and you have the value of the variable. Now, the name of the variable will never change. You will always refer to that spot in the memory of your computer by the same name, but the value of the variable may change. The value may change during the execution of your application, during the execution of your request, or the value may change depending on who is using your application. Example here, first name equal Damien. Well, if another user visits the, the website, well, first name equal Bob, first name equal Bill, first name equal Cindy or whatever. So the name of the variable, first name, will always be the same, but the value you store in that space can change. Hence the name variable, the value can vary. Inside of Cold Fusion, how do you create a variable? Well, you use the cfset tag. You say cfset, first name equal Damien, and that will create the first name variable and assign it with the value Damien. So this is pretty simple. It's the second confusion tag that we talk about in this course. The first one was CF output in the previous video. Now you know CF set to create a variable. Now, when you choose the name of the variable, there are a few things you need to pay attention to. First, no space in the name of a variable. So the variable first name with no space is a correct name, but first space name in two words it's not a correct name for a variable. Also, in Cold Fusion, the name of the variable must start with a letter. So the variable first name is correct, but first name with the number one to say first name is not a correct name for a variable in Cold Fusion. Also, no special characters. There are a bunch of special characters that you, you need to avoid. For example, first name is a good name for a variable, but the French translation prénom is not a good name because of that little thing that you have above the E, that little accent you have above the E. That is a special character. It's not a universal character. It's a character that you don't find in every language. So it is not a proper name for a variable in Cold Fusion. And those rules are pretty much the same as in the other languages as well. So if you are already into programming using other languages than CFML, you should be familiar with all these. Now, if you are already programming in other languages, you might wonder about data types. So in most 
programming languages, a variable can only contain a specific type of data. For example, this is how you declare a variable in Java. String my variable equal than something. So you can write a string of text here. Now the keyword string that you have as the first word of that expression, that keyword means that the variable you create can only contain a string. It cannot contain a number, a date, or another type of data. It can only contain a string. Now in ColdFusion, the variables are typeless. It means that you don't have to worry about data type. So in ColdFusion, you can create a variable, cf set my variable equals some string, and you see that the, the my variable variable contains a string of text. Now later in the process, you can reassign that same variable with another data, another type of data, cf set my variable equals four. You see that four is a number, so that variable can change, it can contain a string at some point, and a number at another point of the process. In Java, that would generate an error, in Java and in other languages as well. But ColdFusion is not a typed language, so you don't have to worry about data types in ColdFusion. The ColdFusion variables are typeless. Another concept which is important to understand is the scope. So you will end up using a lot of variables, and you'd better organize those variables if you want to find them. A, a bit like you organize files and folders in your, your hard disk using folders. You put files into folders to organize things. So this is the same idea here with the scopes. But scopes is a little bit more than that. It's not just about organizing things. It's also about determining where the data is available and when that data is available. Some example of scopes that you have in ColdFusion, you have the variable scope, and that is the default scope. When you use the cfset tag to create a variable, that variable, by default, is created into the variable scope. But the variable scope is available only to the current page. It means that when the request is over, when the page has been processed, that variable scope is destroyed and everything that the variable scope contains is destroyed as well. It's flushed from the memory and it's gone forever. There is no way you can, you can uh, have that data back. So that variable scope is only available to the page where you define the variable. You also have the CGI scope, and that scope is created by the web server. It's created by Apache or by IIS or whatever web server you, you are using, and it contains data related to the latest request. You can, for example, see what was the, the name of the browser used by the, the visitor of your website and stuff like that. You have the server scope. The server scope is created by ColdFusion for you. So you don't have to worry about creating the data that is in this scope. That data is created for you by the ColdFusion server. By the way, the server scope is a read-only scope. You cannot add data to that scope, but you can use the data in that scope. And inside of that scope, you will find data about the ColdFusion server you're using the version of ColdFusion, the update that has been installed, you will find the platform on which the server is running and stuff like that. You also have the application scope it's in, uh, in ColdFusion. And this application scope contains variable available to every page for the entire application. Usually an application is a, is a website, so you can find in the application scope data available to every user, every page of your website. Also, another scope is the session scope, and that scope contains data related to a specific user session. So if two users are visiting your application at the same time, each user will have its own session scope, and you can store things in that session scope specific to each user. If you program, for example, a web shopping uh, application, you will store the shopping cart of each user inside of that session scope. So a scope is a very important concept to understand because a scope defines when the data and where the data is available. If this sounds a little complicated to you, don't worry. In the next video, we will have some hands-on exercises with those concepts and hopefully it will start to make more sense.